With the headlines, I'm Staff Sergeant Tracy Keller. Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh III addressed challenges in cyberspace by Frequently, signing Frequently, we hear news reports of a cyber attack on business computer networks like Sony, and even on U.S. government computer systems such as the Office of Personnel Management. Due to these dangers, significant capabilities and resources we'll are being dedicated to network. counter the cyber threat to our network and information systems. Similar attention also needs to be applied to our aircraft and other weapon systems to ensure we can accomplish our Air Force missions in the face of cyber threats. At first glance, it may appear our aircraft and other weapon systems are immune to the cyber threat. They are not directly connected to the Internet, and they are protected from adversary physical access by gates and security forces. However, Today, our aircraft and other weapon systems are critically dependent on software and computers. Therefore, just as we do for our network and information systems, we must apply basic cybersecurity best practices and tenets to our weapon systems, while striving to design in cyber robustness and resiliency during modifications and new system development. For us to properly build and test our aircraft and other weapon systems to counter cyber-based threats, we must incorporate cyber resiliency as a baseline requirement within each system from the very beginning. This means capturing cybersecurity and cyber resiliency as a fundamental requirement in key acquisition documents, such as the Capability Development Document, Request for Proposal, the Program Protection Plan, and the Test and Evaluation Master Plan, just to name a few. We must counter or mitigate the cyber threat with systems that are born from cyber-resilient requirements and which undergo rigorous testing against the most up-to-date Intel-validated threats. Establishing cyber requirements from program inception will avoid the cost and complexity of adding such capabilities late in development or after fielding. In other words, it's better to bake in cyber requirements up front versus bolt-on requirements later. Air Force Materiel Command will play a central role in protecting our legacy aircraft and other weapon systems, as well as new acquisition systems from the cyber threat. Specifically, the Air Force Research Laboratory will discover and develop new capabilities that will enable our systems to remain effective against the cyber threat. The Air Force Life Cycle Management Center, which fields and supports all of our weapon systems from cradle to grave, will use AFRL developed and other technologies to ensure our system's war-winning capabilities. The Air Force Test Center will evaluate our weapon system's performance in a cyber-contested environment. The Air Force Sustainment Center, which sustains and supplies legacy systems that make up the bulk of our war-winning capabilities, will enable cyber resiliency during recurring software and hardware updates. The Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center will effectively address cyber resiliency so that they can accomplish their nuclear deterrent mission. Throughout this process, the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center will provide essential support to our AFMC centers and commanders worldwide. Cyberspace is a rapidly advancing domain. However, addressing the cyber threat to our aircraft and other weapons systems does not require a unique process. To build cyber resilient systems, we must follow our familiar acquisition processes while ensuring we integrate cyber resiliency into those existing processes. Cyber resiliency must not be seen as the unique responsibility of those that provide network defense for information systems. Everyone that plays a role in the acquisition lifecycle whether program managers, engineers, contracting officers, financial managers, test and evaluation personnel, or logistics managers, must be cyber aware and consider cyber in their given functional areas. On 20 March 2015, Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh directed the Air Force to focus operations to include robustness and resilience of systems that are critical to Air Force core missions in and through cyberspace. In response to the call for action by the Chief of Staff, SAF-AQ established the Cyber Campaign Plan with multiple lines of action. One initiative in particular will directly impact airmen across all functional areas, the Cyber Workforce Development. 
The primary goal of the Cyber Workforce Development Initiative is to have a cyber-savvy workforce capable of integrating cybersecurity measures into all phases of the acquisition process, resulting in the delivery of cyber-resilient aircraft, weapons, and support systems to the warfighter. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matt Dever. I'm the Associate Director here at the uh, Center for Cyberspace Research, and today we're going to be doing the... Avionics. The Cyber Workforce Development Initiative will identify cyber-specific competencies for the acquisition workforce and map those to cyber education and training resources. Where competency gaps are identified, existing courses will be improved or new courses will be developed to address this shortfall. Fundamental to this effort is making the workforce aware of current policies and directives, as well as education and training opportunities with respect to cyber.